We did it, Reddit. I mean, Redis. Redis is open source once again. But what is Redis, and why was it not open source in the first place? Well, for some context. So Redis is an in-memory key-value database used as a distributed cache and message broker with optional durability. Whatever that means. So basically, as I understand it, it's like a caching solution where you can cache key-value pairs. If, for example, you have an API and there are a bunch of clients that make the same request, you don't need to go all the way to the backend servers and, you know, regenerate that same response. You can just use the cached version. As I understand it, that's the core of what it does. But why was it not open source in the first place? And uh, well, what happened? Last year, in March 20th of 2024, Redis adopted a dual source available licensing model. And in particular, this is what their official blog post said. Future Redis releases will continue to offer free and permissive use of the source code under dual RSAL v2 and SSPL v1 licenses. These releases will combine advanced data types and processing engines previously only available in Redis stack. Beginning today, all future versions of Redis will be released with source available licenses. Note that this is source available, not open source. Redis will be dual licensed under the Redis source available license and the server side public license. Consequently, Redis will no longer be distributed under the three clause BSD license. Now, neither of these licenses are true open source licenses. Uh, on the GNU uh, licenses page, none of them are found. Neither the Redis license nor the um, server-side public license. And both of these are source available licenses. They are not open source because they basically have some restrictions on what you can do with the software. Um, as I understand it, the server-side public license has some restrictions. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read through all of this. And to be honest, I'm not a lawyer, uh, so I don't really understand a lot of it. But basically, the idea is that this license prevents cloud companies, uh, such as Amazon, from hosting uh, versions of this software and then charging money for it and not releasing their improvements. Things like that are not allowed by this license. And well, that violates one of the software freedoms, which is the freedom to run and use the software uh, how you want. And since this basically only applies to uh, cloud providers and not to just random other people using the software, that's seen as being kind of discriminatory, right? Because now, well, depending on how you're using it, you more or less have to apply different license terms. So source available, but not open source. So why did they choose these licenses in the first place? And why did they relicense from an open source license? Well, later on in this blog post, they say, the new source available licenses allow us to sustainably provide permissive use of our source code. We're leading Redis into its next phase of development as a real-time data platform with a unified set of clients, tools, and core Redis product offerings. The Redis source code will continue to be freely available to developers, customers, and partners through Redis Community Edition. Future Redis source available licenses will unify core Redis with Redis stack, including search, JSON, vector, probabilistic, and time series data models in one free, easy to use package as downloadable software. Uh, free in this case being free of charge, not necessarily software freedom, not Libre. This will allow anyone to easily use Redis in a variety of contexts, including as a high performance key value and document store, a powerful query engine, and low latency vector database powering Gen AI applications. The blog post goes on to say, the success of Redis has created a unique set of challenges. Redis has been sponsoring the bulk of development alongside a dynamic community of developers eager to contribute. However, the majority of Redis's commercial sales are channeled through the largest cloud service providers who commoditize Redis's investments and its open source community. Despite efforts to support a community-led governance model and our desire to maintain the BSD license, delivering multiple software distributions simultaneously across open source, source available, and commercial software optimized for different on-premises and cloud platforms is at odds with our ability to drive Redis successfully into the future. Under the new license, cloud service providers hosting Redis offerings will no longer be permitted to use the source code of Redis free of charge. For example, cloud service providers will be able to, will be able to deliver Redis 7.4 only after agreeing to licensing terms with Redis, the maintainers of the Redis code. These agreements will underpin support for existing integrated solutions and provide full access to forthcoming Redis innovations. So basically what they're saying is that well, they don't want these cloud providers to be able to freeload the work that Redis is doing, uh, in the sense that the Redis community is putting in all these you know, fixes, all these changes, and all these improvements, but the cloud providers are contributing nothing, hosting it, and essentially making a ton of money just by doing that, 
without actually contributing anything back to the community. And they're saying that, well, to them, that's not, you know, sustainable, and that's why they decided to uh, change the license. And there's a lot of community backlash about this. Um, understandably, people who used to, you know, contribute code to this project under the belief that it was open source and would remain that way, rightfully got kind of pissed off that uh, their work is now no longer open source. But it seems like this time the community backlash worked, and now they've backpedaled on their decision, and Redis will be open source once again. So this is a blog post from Antires, who is the original creator of Redis, who actually left the project um, after the license change. I'm not sure if it was specifically because of that. Um, however, uh, he did rejoin Redis. So let's read the blog post. Five months ago, I rejoined Redis and quickly started to talk with my colleagues about a possible switch to the AGPL license, only to discover there was already an ongoing discussion, and a very old one too. Many people within the company had the feeling that the AGPL was a better pick than SSPL, and while eventually Redis switched to the SSPL license, the internal discussion continued. I tried to give more strength to the ongoing pro-AGPL license side. My feeling was that the SSPL, in practical terms, failed to be accepted by the community. Uh, and this is kind of where the backlash came from, is uh, a lot of people said, well, this isn't an open source license, we don't want this, um, and a lot of people were basically mad about that. Back to the blog post, the OSI wouldn't accept it, nor would the software community regard the SSPL as an open license. In little time, I saw the hypothesis getting more and more traction at all levels within the company hierarchy. I'll be honest, I truly wanted the code I wrote for the new vector sets data type to be released under an open source license. Writing open source software is too rooted in me. I rarely wrote anything else in my career. I'm too old to start now. This may be childish, but I wrote vector sets with a huge amount of enthusiasm exactly because I knew Redis and my new work was going to be open source again. I understand that the core of our work is to improve Redis, to continue building a good system, useful, simple, able to change with the requirements of the software stack. Yet, returning back to an open source license is the basis for such efforts to be coherent with the Redis project, to be accepted by the user base, and to contribute to a human coll collective effort that is larger than any single company. So honestly, while I can't take credit for the license switch, I hope I contributed a little bit to it, because today I'm happy. I'm happy that Redis is open source software again, under the terms of the AGPL v3 license. And I won't read the rest of the blog post, and he does actually have a follow-up blog post as well that I'm not going to read either, but the link is in the description if you are interested in reading it. And here we go, here's the official announcement, May 1st, 2025, Reddit is now available under the AGPLv3 open source license. And this post, which is on the official Redis site, goes into a little bit more detail of how the cloud providers uh, basically are interacting with this change. So the rise of hyperscalers like AWS and GCP, this is uh, Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform, has unlocked incredible speed and scale for startups and enterprises alike. But for companies rooted in open source, it has posed a fundamental challenge. How do you keep innovating and investing in OSS projects when cloud providers reap the profits and control the infrastructure without proportional contributions back to the projects that they exploit? To counter this, companies like MongoDB and Elastic adopted SSPL to protect their business from cloud providers extracting value without reinvesting. Redis initially took a different approach, creating Redis Stack as a separate distribution with a different license for advanced features. This is what um, in the community is sometimes called open core, where you have your core offering is open source, and then you build business features on top of that that are useful for enterprises, and then license that under a license that is either source available or entirely proprietary, with basically the goal of charging companies for the business features while keeping the core fundamental um, part of your software open. And to be honest, I think that's kind of a reasonable model. Um, I'll get into this a bit later, but it is unfortunate that companies like Amazon and Google are able to massively profit off of open source projects uh, without really contributing anything back. Um, but I'll discuss that a bit later. Back to the blog post. While this safeguarded innovation, it also split the developer experience and slowed progress on core Redis. What we really needed was a way to enhance Redis at its core without maintaining two separate tracks, Redis Community and Redis Stack. After I joined the company and a year of evaluating alternatives, in March 2024, we decided to move Redis to the SSPL license. This achieved our goal. AWS and Google now maintain their own fork, but the change hurt our relationship with the Redis community. SSPL is not truly open source because the open source initiative clarified it lacks the requisites to be an OSI approved license. And here actually I kind of want to push back on this. It's not open source because the open source initiative said it isn't, right? 
the open source initiative, you know, they're I'm sure they're a fine organization, but they don't get to decide the rules on what is open source and what isn't. The reason it's not open source is because it doesn't follow the requirements that the software development community has decided are the requirements for open source software, right? Like the open source initiative, they might have written the specific wording for the rules that are kind of in place nowadays for what is and isn't open source, but that set of rules was only adopted by the community because that's kind of what the community already agreed with, right? The open source initiative isn't some magical arbiter of what is and isn't open source. We accept that their definition is correct because it was already more or less the definition that uh, was in place within the community. Back to the blog post. Following our license change in November of 2024, uh, Salvatore Sanfilippo and Tires, the person who wrote this uh, original blog post, decided to rejoin Redis as a developer evangelist. Collaborating with Salvatore on new capabilities, company strategy, and okay, blah, blah, blah. And eventually, uh, they added the open, so the open source initiative approved AGPL as an additional licensing option for Redis, starting with Redis 8, available now. So now this project has three licenses, the AGPL, the SSPL, and the Redis source available license. And if you're wondering what this fork of Redis is, well, it is Valky. Uh, the Wikipedia page says that Valky is an open source in memory key value database used as a distributed cache and message broker with optional durability. That might sound a little bit familiar. It's basically the same thing as Redis, right? Because, well, it is a fork of Redis. And Valky was actually uh, sponsored by the Linux Foundation. Here's a blog post from the Linux Foundation website. Linux Foundation launches open source Valky community on March 28th, 2024. Today, the Lynx Foundation announced its intent to form Valky, an open source alternative to the Redis in-memory NoSQL data store. Project contributors quickly gathered maintainer community and corporate support to regroup in response to the recent license change announced by Redis Inc. Valky will continue development on Redis 7.2.4 and keep the project available for use and distribution under the open source BSD 3 clause license. And then they go on to basically say that, well, we want to keep it open source and well, all of these companies are supporting Valky. And then they have a bunch of quotes from people saying, you know, they're glad that it is open source once again. And to be honest, while it is certainly in their legal right to do this, to me, this does actually feel kind of gross um, in the sense that as soon as these people, right, by people, I really mean corporations, AWS, Google Cloud, Oracle, Ericsson, and Snap Inc., as soon as they saw that, well, they might actually have to pay for uh, this project, you know, to pay people for their work, they just decided, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to fork it. And then we're just going to, you know, let other people more or less maintain the fork. And well, you know, even if they contribute to the fork, like, okay, that's great. Maybe this is a bad take, but it still kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth that as soon as they were asked to basically pay people for their work, they said, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to fork your project and your project can go and die, basically. If anything, I think this is a reminder that the Linux, Linux Foundation is absolutely geared towards preserving the interests of large corporations because, well, you know, the Amazons and Googles of the world pay a lot of money to the Linux Foundation. And ultimately, the Linux Foundation is always going to do what's best for them as long as it doesn't directly violate open source principles where, you know, this is just another example of it, basically. But, you know, that's a topic for another time. I have a whole video plan on this where I want to talk about this in more detail, so I'll save it for later. And I won't go through reading all the comments on this. Um, this is the Hacker News uh, post for, well, Redis becoming open source once again. But there are some good points here about how this seems to keep happening. Step one, people put a lot of work into building databases. The license choice is OSS or, you know, free or an open source. Later, some people in the community make a company around the database and continuing, uh, continue to develop it for years on end, and sometimes they raise venture capital to expand and make it a sustainable business, basically. And then the, you know, the cloud provider sharks see that there is, you know, money to be made, and they offer managed versions of the database and make bank on it, millions of dollars, and the original creators and developers who created the software and continue to maintain it basically for free get nothing. And then the company decides to more or less rug pull um, all these companies that have built, uh, you know, these managed offerings, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. Well, if they want to keep using the software, at least new versions of it, they'll have to pay up. And let's be honest, I mean, that is kind of a rug pull, right? 
you used to have it under one license and now you're changing it to another license and saying, well, you can't use this anymore, you're gonna have to pay us money. That's kind of the definition of a rug pull, right? And then of course, uh, the cloud providers fork it, the community gets mad and so on and so on. And then they walk back the changes, but at the end of the day, there's still no revenue. They're still not making any money off of it. The company is just like not sustainable, right? It's basically developed by people contributing their free time to it as if it were a charity. I'll save that discussion for later because I am planning to do another video on it. And this post was correct in that this isn't the first time this has happened. Uh, it happened similarly with Elasticsearch. Here's a blog post from Elastic.co. Elasticsearch is open source again. The post reads, Elasticsearch and Kibana can be called open source again. It is hard to express how happy this statement makes me, literally jumping up and down with excitement here. All of us at Elastic are. Open source is in my DNA. It is in Elastic DNA. Being able to call Elasticsearch open source again is pure joy. The TLDR is that we will be adding AGPL as another license option next to ELV2 and SSPL in the coming weeks. We never stop believing and behaving like an open source community after we change the license. But being able to use the term open source by using AGPL, an OSI approved license, removes any questions or FUD that people might have. And what was the reason for not going open source or for switching from open source to source available in the first place? Well, again, it's the same story, right? Blah, 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 issues with AWS and their market confusion their offering was causing. So after trying all our other options we could think of, we changed the license knowing it would result in a fork with a different name and a different trajectory. It's a long story. The good news is that while it was painful, it worked. Three years later, Amazon is fully invested in their fork, market confusion has been mostly resolved, and our partnership with AWS is stronger than ever. We were even named AWS Partner of the Year. I had always hoped that enough time would pass that we could feel safe being to get back to being an open source project, and it finally has. And to be clear, like the outcome here is that there was a lot of confusion about what Elastic is because I guess Amazon had a hosted offering that was called something similar. And in this case, changing the license to a source available one worked because Amazon made a fork, you know, created it with a different name, has actually put their time and effort and money into maintaining it. And now it's an entirely separate thing rather than just them hosting uh, Elasticsearch. Even though they switch back to an open source license, the thing that let them continue to sustain their business was switching from open source to a source available license. And then of course, it is nice for the community uh, to eventually get it back um, in a open source form. And they chose AGPL versus another license because they hope to basically work with the community, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, this line is kind of funny to me, euphoria. I am so happy to be able to call Elasticsearch open source again. I don't have a fedora on me, so this uh, Fallout hat will have to do, but uh, let me tip my hat to you. In this moment, I am euphoric, not because of the blessing of some phony stallman, but because I'm enlightened by the freedom of my software. <laughs> okay, memes aside, uh, this FAQ does actually have some kind of interesting points. For example, some people thought that changing the license was a mistake and Elastic now backtracks from it. Well, like I said, them changing to a source available license from an open source was a successful thing that worked. They removed a lot of market confusion when they changed their license. A lot has changed. It's an entirely different landscape now, etc., etc. AGPL is not true open source license X is. I mean, to me, that seems a bit ridiculous. I don't think anyone's seriously saying that. AGPL is OSI approved, but what really matters is that it meets the definition of open source that the community agrees is the definition of open source and AGPL seems to do that uh, and so on. And with that, that's all I have to say. Uh, let me know what you think about these uh, companies changing from open source to source available licenses and then changing back. Um, I know a lot of people in the community think that, well, they're just backtracking and them changing to an open source or to a source available license was a complete mistake. To be honest, I do think it's more nuanced than that. I mean, if the company was to go under and to, you know, stop being able to put resources into development of the project. I think there's an argument to be made that changing to SSPL in particular is a preferable alternative to just having the project be abandoned and die more or less. But uh, that is a controversial take within the software development community. So let me know what you think, um, if you agree or disagree, and thanks for watching.